So we're here at uh, TSMC. So today, the, your CTO had the keynote here. Yes. So what did he talk about? Yeah, Jackson talked about our process. He talks about our um, advanced processes, what we are doing on 28, 2016, and uh, the, at the end of uh, 2015, we'll introduce 10 nanometers. He also uh, mentioned other things. Uh, he was uh, glad to announce the things that we are doing together with ARM. We mentioned uh, the collaboration with the A57 on 16 nanometers in FET. And um, I think that was a summary of what he presented. So what does it mean that ARM is working with TSMC? In which ways? How? Um, I'm afraid I cannot give too many details on that. Um, he mentioned that TSMC and ARM are very interested on optimizing both the processor technology and the process to give the best performance, power, and cost to our common customers. And that's all that we can say at this moment. So TSMC is the biggest foundry in the world. Yes, I think we are. If we look at smartphones, for example, yes. uh, is it 60 or 80 percent of these are made by chips made by TSMC? Uh, that's probably accurate. You know, it, it depends. I mean, some of the process, some of the dyes there are analog dyes, some of the dyes are power management, some are digital. So in different segments, uh, TSMC has different uh, market shares. But in general, yeah, I would say that's probably accurate. So it's just all these chips made in the same few buildings in Taiwan? or uh, TSMC has three main sites on Taiwan. In addition to that, TSMC has fabs in uh, Singapore, has fabs in Shanghai, and also on the US, uh, wafer tech. So we have wafers, uh, wafer fabs worldwide. The advanced fabs, they are all in Taiwan. So if you look at these, for example, these uh, wafer, wafers, uh, where are these made? These are made in Taiwan. Taiwan, Taiwan. So what are, what are those two, for example? So they are, these are prototypes of our 3D packaging, what they call it, COS, cheap, on wafer, on substrate. We have different, two different prototypes. This one is it's real. It is real. So what you see is the back of the dies. So this one uses a chip from TSMC and a chip from a partner, a memory partner. Yeah. And why they are Can we open there? Uh, no, Can we cannot closer? open that. No, so it's... Uh... What we have there is different. On this one, this is what they call heterogeneous. You have uh, three different dies. One of them is 28 nanometers, the one at the bottom. At, at the top there, one of them is 65 nanometers for a GPS controller, and the other one is embedded DRAM. These are built for demonstration purposes. The idea is to emulate the system, and you're going to launch, for instance, Linux, and you're going to exercise the interfaces. What we're trying to do with this is to pipe clean the process for 3D packaging, not necessarily to have a commercial product. And this one? On this one, what we are exercising is a very wide memory interface, and we are doing with a DRAM partner. So um, this is a wafer, yes. and that's what you make. You make these kinds of round things? Yes. The whole day, uh, 24 hours a day? How many yes. is pumped out of the, the fab? Oh, we have multiple fabs and we have multiple sizes. So I'm afraid I don't remember the, the name, and I don't want uh, yeah. I don't want my colleagues to be unhappy with me quoting the wrong number. But uh, these come out one at a time, no, or no, in several. Case, and as I mentioned here, for instance, we have three different wafers yeah. and the, three different technologies. 28, 40, and 65 nanometers. Additionally, we have an interposer layer. The interposer layer is what you have between these three dies and the substrate of the package. That one is done on 65 nanometers as well. That one is a passive layer. There is only contacts and metal. There is no active devices in there. Um, so over there on the wall, yeah. what do you talk about? Uh, what is this full technology coverage? What does it mean? What it means is that TSMC is known yeah. to uh, most people for our advanced processes. And we announced uh, just two weeks ago the OIP forum that we will have 10 nanometers at the uh, end of 2015. But in addition to that, we have many other processes. Something that many uh, people do not know is on the older processes, on what they call more and more, 70% 
of the uh, eight inches wafers are on a speciality processes. They are not uh, plain mozzy. We'll have things like embedded flash. We'll have uh, MEMS. We'll have uh, embedded DRAM. We'll have RF. We have RF all the way to 28 nanometers. We have um, bipolar devices. We have high voltage devices, 40 and 60 volt. And we have CMOS image sensors. CMOS image sensors in 55 nanometers and uh, 40 nanometers. So this is a part of TSMC that uh, people are not so familiar with. What is this? Which are these companies? So this is our IP ecosystem. In our IP ecosystem, we have four main groups. We have the IP vendors, and this is my area of expertise. Then we have our EDA vendors. We work together to put and the flows together. And there are some examples, some other slides. Then we have the DCAs. DCAs are design partners. A customer can go to them with their design. They can do place and route. They can do packets, and they can do more. And uh, similarly, we have the value aggregators. In this case, they can do even more. They can do the uh, they can do the full turnkey solution. So these are not necessarily the chip providers. They are the technology providers, right? Correct. So in here, you wouldn't mention some of the names that are like uh, actually shipping the sh processor. No, this will be for instance. In this case, we have ARM. Yeah. Uh, one of our common customers will use. Uh, from ARM, we'll use uh, standard cells, use memory, we we'll use the POP. Uh, we'll also use the soft IP, for instance, on ARM A7, we'll use several cores of those. They will go to one of our processes, for instance, to the LP, and use all this IP together to build their SOC. So there's some stuff coming from uh, Renaissance, and some stuff coming from, uh, or in partnership with uh, Chips and Media, video and stuff, yes. and each of them, it's a big collaboration. Yes. And uh, it might be that many of the different chips use many of these technologies. Yeah, typically, I would say the average is two or three different partners. Two or three per end product. And not an end product, in an average. Of course, there are some customers that they create most of their IP for themselves. There are the customers that they prefer to concentrate on the core competency, and they use partners a lot more. So that will be the average. So what are you showing over here? What we are showing over here is the uh, the portfolio of IP that we have, and this is a bit old. It's keep changing. As of last week, the number was 4,952. So the, keep, the number of IP titles keep uh, growing, especially on the newer process, 28 nanometers and so on. And the IP are very different IP. We have analog IP, A to be converted to A, uh, embedded memories, SRAMs, ROMs, non-volatile memory, OTP, NTP. We have embedded flash, we have electrical fuses, and here we have a typo, I apologize for that. Then uh, we have foundation IP, here TSMC provides some, partners like ARM provides a lot of foundation IP for common customers, and then interface IP is becoming very popular on the last uh, few years. Here we have USB interfaces, DDR interface, MIP interface, HDMI, PCI Express, those are very popular interfaces. And customers used to build those on their own. Now they tend to license from our partners. All right. Uh, so it is kind of crazy to say that you're going to make 10 nanometer, no? But do you know it's going to work? How can you know for sure? We already have prototypes today. And we have samples of 10 nanometers. We can build devices. Uh, what we don't have today yet is a mechanism to do 10 nanometers at the volume that our customers need. The whole industry has that problem. We are all working on extreme ultraviolet to get the equipment allow us to do volume production on 10. Um, samples we can do, some of our competitors, they also have samples of 10 nanometers. We know how to build it. We are not ready to build it on full volume production yet. So is that kind of like the key is about mass manufacturing? When you can, when you cannot? That is the name of the game. That's Moore's Law. This is what we have been doing for the last 25 years. We moved from 10, 10 micron, 8 micron. In my days, I remember designing with 3, mi uh, three micron, so that tells you how old I am. And now we are on 10 nanometers, and, and we expect that to continue. We know that we can build 10 nanometers. We know that FinFET uh, can extend to 7 nanometers and beyond that. Uh, so, for example, when some people need to have 28 nanometers, yes. is it, this, this is in the available part here. Yeah, and, it's in volume uh, production today. 
Um, in the beginning, you didn't have mass manufacturing, and you had to kind of fix some bugs and get it working. Or that's always the process. We uh, we bring up a process internally. Um, some quarters before it's ready to go into volume production, we start to work with lead partners like Arm, for instance, so that we start to build the IP that customers will need. We have some uh, lead customers that are interested in doing some um, some test structures with us to see that the process works as expected. And from there, they start to do early risk production and then volume production. The first half of this year, we were not able to manufacture in 20 nanometers all the wafers that our customers wanted. And this first is half? The first half of the year. Yeah. Now we believe that we are almost there. At the beginning of next year, we are very confident we'll have all the capacity on 20 nanometers required. So why didn't you have the capacity? Oh, that's... Uh, I don't think I can answer this. Was that bugs? Bugs? Or? Uh, no, no, no. It was nothing related to bugs. It, uh, we did not guess right in terms of how much the industry would need from us and from our competitors. So uh, at the end, we are very glad that most of our customers came to us. Many of our customers have been very successful, and their volume forecast grew. It was more than we expected at the beginning, in some cases more than they expected at the beginning. And, um, and it takes several quarters to ramp up production. You need to buy the equipment, you need to install it, you need to get it working in production. So we could not ramp up production as fast as we want. Even if we have the buildings, even if we have the capital, it takes time to ramp up. So buy the materials or buy the equipment, what, what kind of thing is that? Or do you buy like metals from that are shipped from uh, mines and all over the world? No, the, the bottleneck is on uh, equipment, wafer manufacturing equipment from um, our providers. And uh, if you check the news, you will see that TSMC recently invested on a company from the Netherlands that built that type of equipment. So it's very specialized equipment? Yes. Shoot very big machines or small machines? Uh, fairly big. Fairly big machines? Fill out, I guess, huge holes like this, but much bigger and... I did. You can come to our uh, website, uh, we have some videos there. Uh, it's quite interesting, really. You will see the new equipment. You have rails with the robots going on the ceiling, carrying the, the wafers. You, you will see that. It's very interesting. Can I visit the fab? Can uh, I make some videos in the fab? Maybe. Maybe. We would have to ask. Maybe not. Ask. Probably not. No, it's kind of a secret, no? Uh, the area. We, we take uh, just three weeks ago, I was in yeah. Taiwan with partners from ARM, and I was very glad to take some of our ARM partners to visit our FAB 12, our most advanced FAB in Taiwan, and uh, they were able to see it. So, on the right circumstances, you could see it. Too. And is it fun? Is I it fun think place? it was fun. I think it was It's fun. impressive? It's is it kind of like really visiting? really impressive. Is it like visiting the NASA? Uh, well, there are many sites on NASA. You know, I'm biased. It was, I found it more interesting. All right, cool. So, looking forward to 16, how soon? How soon is this one? Uh, 16 nanometers is going to be on volume production in November of 2013. November 2013 volume. So, November... Vol uh, risk production. What? Risk production. Uh, early. Early, early production. production. So, it's not red in November. It's just going to be still this green. This is when customers will start to get the first chip. They can provide samples to their customers, for instance. So, possibly next Christmas, it's going to be 20 and 16. 20, 20 is going to go into risk production first quarter of next year. So on Christmas, it will be reasonable to have some early volume production. So for sure that next Christmas, not this Christmas, next Christmas, the products under the tree might have 20 meter. I will have 20 for sure. For and sure. There will be some 16 as well.